Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a mono blue deck featuring Forsaken Monument, the 5 mana Mythic Rare Legendary Artifact, giving colorless creatures we control plus 2 plus 2. Whenever we tap a permanent for colorless mana, we can add an additional colorless on top, and whenever we cast a colorless spell, we also gain 2 life. So Forsaken Monument rewards us for playing all these colorless lands, as they'll essentially make double the amount of mana, which will give us the mana necessary to ramp into an Ugin the Spirit Dragon, which is going to be our finisher of choice. And then of course we've got plenty of artifact creatures that will get the plus two plus two bonus as well. So let's take a look at the entire deck list. At one mana we can potentially play a Stone Coil Serpent for one, which sets up a turn to Emery. Then we can also play Stone Coil later in the game for large amounts if we have a Forsaken Monument out to help us close out the game. Can even play Stone Coil Serpent for X equals zero if we have a Forsaken Monument in play and it will still enter the battlefield as a 2-2, especially relevant with Emery getting it back from the graveyard. Then at 2 mana we've got Maze Mind Tome to give us a bit of early card selection and card draw, can help us find Forsaken Monument or Ugin in the late game, and also just gives us a nice mana sink in the late game. Then at 3 mana we've got Emery, which we can potentially play for a single blue mana if we have 2 or more artifacts in play, we'll mill the top 4 cards of our library and then can tap to return an artifact from the graveyard to the battlefield by paying its mana cost, so this can also help us gain access to a Forsaken Monument if we happen to mill it, or if the first copy got dealt with somehow. And then we also have Palladium Mirror, 3 mana for a 2-2 that taps for double colorless, so we'll make 3 colorless with a Forsaken Monument in play, just helps us ramp into Monument, into Ugin the Spirit Dragon, and also gets the plus 2 plus 2 bonus. And we have 2 copies of Skycliff Relic, which is not a ramp artifact, and it's 1 mana of any color, sadly doesn't make colorless mana, so it's not actually synergistic with our Forsaken Monument, but we can also kick it for an additional 3 mana, and then we get to make 2 tokens that are copies of Skycliff Relic, so we get to add 3 additional mana on the following turn, which is also very useful since we've got a ton of ways to spend our mana in this deck, especially if you look at the mana base as well. Now we could also be playing with Midnight Clock instead of Skyclave Relic to give us a bit more game against opposing mill decks as we can potentially shuffle our graveyard back into our deck. Although if we do play Midnight Clock we'll probably have to play a few additional islands because right now we do have Base Camp, that's a colorless land so it synergizes with Forsaken Monument but it still makes blue mana for Emery because Emery is a wizard. So if we do include the Midnight Clock we'll probably have to replace some of these base camps with additional islands making our Forsaken Monument a little bit weaker so that's why I'm opting for the Skyclave Relic Relic over Midnight Clock, but it's an easy change you can make. Next up we've got Myriad Construct, another new addition from Zenica Rising. 4 mana for a 4-4 Construct, it also has Kicker for 3 mana, and if Construct was kicked it enters battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each non-basic land your opponents control. And when the construct becomes the target of a spell, sacrifice it and create a number of 1-1 one, one colorless construct artifact creature tokens equal to its power. Now that can actually be beneficial for us if we have a Forsaken Monument in play, giving all those tokens plus 2 plus 2. So we do have a card in the deck that can help us enable sacrificing the construct and turning it into a bunch of 1-1 one, one tokens. With our Sublime Epiphany, we can target our Myriad Construct and essentially pop the piñata and turn it into a whole bunch of tokens, which can be great for us. And then we also have the full playset of Solemn Simulacrum, which will also help us ramp. It's a 2-2 that when it enters the battlefield lets us search a basic land to put on the battlefield tapped. And then when the Simulacrum dies we also get to draw a card. And then of course we've got our four copies of Monument, the full playset of Ugin the Spirit Dragon. It may not be the most original win condition, but it does help us clean up the mess that some of the four color Omnath decks can leave behind. And it's also just a great way to catch us back if we're behind. And then last but not least I'm trying out two copies of Sublime Epiphany as an all-purpose counter spell, which also has some nice synergy with our Myriad Construct. It is double blue, so it's not the easiest on the mana, but we do have Skyclave Relic and Solemn Simulacrum, which can help us make more blue mana to eventually have double blue by the time we want to cast this. And then the mana base, only 8 islands, really want to minimize the number of non-colorless lands in this deck. Then 4 copies of base camp, it does come into play tapped, but we don't have much going on on turn 1 anyways, so if we have this in our opening hand it's no big deal. Then 4 copies of Bonders Enclave, which is also a great card draw engine in the deck, especially if we have the additional mana from Forsaken Monument, which can help us draw a card if we have a creature with power 4 or greater, which is especially easy if we have a Forsaken Monument giving our creatures plus 2 plus 2. 
And then Crawling Barons has also been an amazing card in this deck. It's a land, and for 4 mana we can put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Don't even have to turn it into a land if we want to play around opposing removal spells. And then at some point we can turn it into a creature, and it will of course carry over all those plus 1 plus 1 counters. So we can also use this as a mana sink to just build up this giant Crawling Barons. And then finally, four copies of Radiant Fountain, which gains two life when it enters the battlefield. So very useful against opposing aggro decks. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. And what do we think of this hand? No monument, double Ugin, and no real ramp. So this is probably a mulligan. This is better. We do have Monument into Ugin potentially, only two lands, but we do have Maze Mind Tomb to help us find more lands and probably get rid of the Epiphany, even though we have Construct, just because we might not have double blue and play base camp tapped. Opponent is trying to mill us, so now I regret not having access to my Midnight Clock. Cacophony mills us for 8. And we just need to hit land drops for the rest of the game, essentially. Now I can draw instead of scrying with the tome. Could have also drawn main phase in case I drew another base camp. Ferris Tutelage shows up. Yeah, we're probably going to be too slow this game. Even if we had a Midnight Clock, it would probably be too slow to activate. At least we'll have the lands to play Monument on Curve. And Ugin can exile the Teferi's Tutelage at least, so... It's going to be close. Twenty nine cards remaining. Brazen Borrower splits up Construct into a bunch of tokens, which also fizzles the Brazen Borrower. So that's actually great for us. And now we'll be able to pump all these tokens with Forsaken Monument, so... They maybe wanted to time the Brazen Borrower on our upkeep so the tokens couldn't attack. And then I'm okay scrying with Tome. And don't really need Islands. So the tokens give us a pretty fast clock. Opponent jumps, nope takes 12 damage down to 8, and yeah, next turn we could have lethal, especially considering we can play Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Another Rune Crab. And a Swamp, alright, opponent was missing black mana this entire time, so they could have a Drown in the Lock to counter Ugin. So it could be close. Opt triggers Tutelage. Another Frantic Inventory could be bad here. It's going to be a third Rune Crab, although they've already played land for the turn, and a Merfolk Wind Robber as their last card, which can be sacrificed to mill us once again. I'm fine if they mill my top card here. We're just going to play Ugin, minus three, and that should be game over. Alright, sweet. Close one here against the mill deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. The second Ugin may be not great, but... I've got a nice start with Maze Mind Tome into Mirror. And Monument was an amazing draw here too. Opponent on blue-red. So 
some resolves. Already have my next couple land drops, but I guess I wouldn't mind finding a couple of colorless lands. Uh, Simulacrum is still fine because it gives us a play if the mirror doesn't survive. Opponent on Teamer Adventures plays out Bone Crusher Giants. At least they didn't stomp my Palladium Mirror here. If they don't kill it, next turn I get to play Forsaken Monuments. Opponent does have a Ruin Cramp as well, so this is probably a four color. Adventure Omnath hybrids. They do have a second giant to stomp my mirror, sadly. So we do have a lot of islands here, which is unfortunate when we have Forsaken Monuments, but we'll still have plenty of mana to work with. If everyone is playing Rune Cramps, then definitely make the switch and add Midnight Clocks to your deck. Enclaves is a nice draw, so we want to tap our blue mana to play a Monument, and then we can still play a Maze Mind Tomb. Gain some life back, and next turn we can slam down Ugin, which is going to be pretty strong. So I don't necessarily want to trade here, but we'll see if they offer to begin with. Opponent does still attack. Do I take 8 down to 6? Eh, probably not. Even though I'm gonna minus 3 next turn if Ugin resolves. And I should probably scry in response to the draw trigger here, but I guess I should have gone full control for that to work. That's okay, we can just scry in of turn. Fountain's fine. And then we'll see if our opponent has a counter spell. They do not. On vile wings and bloody, I didn't catch the rest. Uh, Alright, GG's. And we drew into the Emery, that's why I drew main phase. I guess we're helping the opponent a little bit, but we've got a nice full graveyard with all these artifacts, can play a huge Stone Cold Serpent next turn. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty decent hand. Two ramp options into Forsaken Monuments and then Epiphany, which will have double blue thanks to Relic. Facing turn 1 Hateful Eidolon, so it doesn't bode well for my Palladium Mirror. So I'll probably wait to play it until after Monument and just go with the Skyclave Relic on 3. Although I will need to draw an extra land, there we go. Potent's probably playing cards like Deadweight, Myers Grasp, which can easily take out a 2-2. Two -two. Meyer Triton joins the fun. Opponents playing with Scourge of the Skyclaves as well. Not the best with all the lifelink creatures they have. Let's see. Yeah, I'll probably just play a Skyclave Relic here. And then next turn we can play Monuments. Which will also gain a bit of life back. Ooh, Hunted Nightmare. That's gonna hit pretty hard. So we'll just play Monument and pass. And down to seven we go. And opponent plays a Drana. So they're definitely not afraid of Ugin the Spirit Dragon here. 4-4 four, four Flyer, yeah that's kinda scary. So what can I do here? I really need to keep up Sublime Epiphany. So that leaves me three mana, essentially. So I guess I can play a 4-4 four, four Palladium Mirror. And then copy it with the Sublime Epiphany. Uh, 
And we'll pass. Hope the opponent plays something pre-combat we can counter with Epiphany. Feed the Swarm will do. So counter, bounce, copy, draw. So target non-land permanence. Bounce Drana. Copy mirror, we draw a card. Alright, not bad. Opponents down to just Drana in hand. I think I'm fine with the trade here. And yeah, opponent just packs it in too far behind. We've got too much mana. And we did have some nice mana things here too with the Bonders Enclave can draw extra cards. And now Crawling Barons can also be a huge creature. So, all right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play facing Lurus of the Dream Den. We've got a fine hand. Turn one, get this base camp out of the way. Turn two, Maze Mind Tome. Opponents on cycling, fair enough. So, play Tomb. And then, what are we looking for? I guess uh, Forsake Monument and Ugin eventually. Myriad Constructs, eh, it's okay. But it's probably not gonna win me the game. I guess I don't have to scry because I have a fine play lined up here with uh, Palladium Mirror. Can wait until end of turn to scry, maybe get a bit more info on what the opponent is doing. Although it's probably going to involve cycling. They don't have a second color so far, but I imagine they're playing red-white. Flourishing Fox. It's definitely a scary card too. Now we do have a double Palladium Mirror and Relic, so we could just hard cast Ugin without Monument, so... I think just looking for Ugin is gonna be the priority. So don't hate crying right now. Let's see, three, play this. Yeah, I don't have enough mana to necessarily draw with Tome if I also want to play Relic, but I don't have to play Relic. So maybe I do just take my draw step. Stone Call's nice. So, can play Mirror, play Relic. And I could decide to play a 1-1 one -one Stone Coil. Don't know if that's really necessary. Could have also waited to play this Kicked next turn. Yeah, I mean, maybe if my game plan involves drawing Ugin, I'm fine just playing the Serpent as a chum blocker here. And then I can Scry. And maybe draw with Tome next turn. Because I really want to preserve my life total so we don't get low when facing a Zenith Flare. There's the red mana. And the Stone Call is keeping the Rescuer on defense, so we'll jump. A second Fox. Come on, Ugin. Solemn Simulacrum, not bad, but also not amazing. Although I can play it and still draw with Tome, so maybe it's fine. So yeah, I guess we'll play Solemn, get an island. It's gonna mess up my Scry a little bit, but that's probably fine. If I draw with Tomb, then I'm gonna be one mana short of casting Ugin if I draw it, so this seems fine. I guess I should consider drawing before shuffling my deck with uh, Solemn, because we have two cards we don't necessarily want to draw on the bottom. But then I don't have the Palladium Mirror to block a 1-1 one -one token, maybe. So it's kind of close. I guess I will draw here. If 
Found a fountain. Search for an island. And then we're kind of out of action here. Still have the crawling barons we can pump mana into. But that's about it. So using that stone coal as an aggressive chum blocker may not have worked out. At least I'm happy chumping with Psalm Simulacrum on Flourishing Fox. Emery could be useful. And Forsaken Monuments, alright. So... Play Monuments. Can play Emery using base camp. Gain a bit of life back, and now we can start sinking mana into our crawling barons. And what can Emery get back? Psalm Simulacrum or a big Stone Coil Serpent. Although, to win this game, we'll definitely need to draw Ugin. Opponent's got nine cycling cards in a graveyard now. And they attack with all, so yeah, they definitely have at least one Zenith Flare in hand, if not more. I assume I have to chum block the biggest Flourishing Fox. So what happens if I take 12, go to 12, one additional cycling creature ends up in the graveyards. So I would go to one here off a of Zenith Flare. So I'm not technically dead. But what's the alternative? I guess just chumping both foxes. Yeah, I mean, I guess if my out is just drawing Ugin anyway, I might as well. And then we'll pump some mana into the Crawling Barons. Opponent's gonna flare us for 10, so they probably have a second one in hand. What can Emery do for us? I guess get back Maze Mind Tome and draw, and hope to find Ugin. Although I'm probably still dead. Big Stone Cold Serpents. I guess I can play it at maximum size, because I also need Crawling Barons as a blocker here. And then I'm still barely hanging on, so this requires 4 mana to be activated. So I can sink 5 mana into Serpents. Is that the best I can do? Or am I better off activating this a second time? Then it would be an 8-8. Eight eight. Still probably just gonna die to the Flourishing Fox. So I guess it doesn't matter too much here. Played for 5. I guess I forgot about the plus 2 plus 2 from Forsaken Monument here. So maybe playing a slightly smaller Serpent to be able to use Barons twice was better.
so we're at three. And there's a second Zenith there, no doubt. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, the sand's okay. Turn two tomb, turn three, I can go relic into Emery, which is a nice sequence. Make use of every single mana. And then hopefully Emery mills over some juicy artifacts. Sadly, the tome exiles itself, so you can't get it back with Emery once it's gone. Opponent on blue-black, probably keeping up a counter spell here. Um, I do want maybe one more land, but Island's pretty bad. So I'll just take my draw. Epiphany could be nice. And I do have double blue thanks to the Relic. Lofty Denial counters Emery, but we've got a backup. So our opponent probably on blue-black rogues. I'll keep a fountain. So I'll see if Emery resolves. And then I can still play a Myriad Construct, and we've got a Construct Epiphany Wombo Combo here. Although no monument to pump up our tokens. Alright, got some artifacts to get back. Also, Emery did enable potential drown in the locks from our opponents. Counters construct. I mean, if they can't kill Emery, Emery just gets back whatever artifact they counter, so we'll see if they have an answer for Emery as well. If they kill Emery, I probably need to keep Tome to actually draw to get ahead on resources. Otherwise, I might scry in a turn. They did have a second round, so. Don't think I'll be scrying with the Tome, and instead just drawing. Well, now that we find a second tome, I guess it's not so bad to scry with the first one. Although I guess I can just draw first here. Play tome, and I can draw with the second one, so we've got a ton of card advantage coming our way. Opponent's not really pressuring us. And all the utility lands in this deck are great at playing these grindy matchups where the opponent's trying to play counter spells and removal spells. Stone Coil. We'll just draw. And then now I can keep up Epiphany. Let's see, two, four, six. Stone Coil's not the best with Epiphany because copying it doesn't copy the plus one plus one counters. A Sorting Thought Thief. Yeah, let's counter that. Although there's nothing to bounce, so it's kind of medium. So how much do we care about a thief? I guess they can have it. Stone Coil can also block it, so I guess a 1-1 Stone Coil could have blocked a thief, although they would still mill me, so probably want to play it with at least 3 power. Forsaken Monument goes to the graveyard. They've already used two Drown in the Locks, although they could have more Lofty Denials, of course. And Zareth San. Well, we've got bad news for our opponents. And then we'll just take our draw step, I think. Palladium Mirror. So I can play a 4 4 Serpent and still draw with Tomb. So 
Serpent can be killed by Drown. And there's Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Make that two. So... The problem here is if my opponent has a Lofty Denial or a Drown, they get to go counter my Ugin, play the Thief, sneak in Zareth, and then... I guess never mind, I still have Stone Coil to block. So they can sneak in Zareth to steal my Ugin. Yeah, I guess we'll just uh, cast Ugin here and see what happens. There is an argument for just playing the mirror, making more mana so we can pay for Lofty Denial, but Drown was going to get us anyway. So definitely don't want to attack with Serpent, otherwise my opponent gets to have my Ugin. They could have Brazen Borrower to bounce Serpents, but they wouldn't be able to sneak in Zareth if they want to do both. Opponent does bounce Serpent. Maybe they have more Brazen Borrowers in hand. So my opponent is down to one Drown in the Loch, but potentially more Lofty Denials. Ooh, Forsaken Monuments, so let's start there. Can even pay for Lofty Denial, although that would let them sneak in Zareth. That resolves. And then it's going to be a 6-6 Stone Call thanks to the Monuments. Alright, so it doesn't seem like they have a Lofty Denial in hand, but you never know. It's gonna be a Thieves Guild Enforcer. If they have another Flash creature, they can sneak in Zareth. Yeah, second Thief, so one of the Thieves is gonna fly over, put Zareth in play, opponent steals my Ugin. But Ugin doesn't kill any of my stuff, since it's all colorless. And then my opponent's going to be tapped out, I can play my Ugin, we both have Ugins. And then the game's going to continue from there, I think. 28 cards remaining, so not too afraid of getting milled out just yet. Question is, do I want to trade here for Enforcer? I don't think so, because I want to keep my mirror to pressure the opponent's Ugin. Now they could also put Zareth in play using Enforcer if I don't block. But maybe that's good for me, because then they don't have a Thief in hand post Ugin. And because of protection here, I'm not going to take any damage, so Ugin can finish off my Stone Coil. So that all happens, we take 9. Opponent loses a Thief. And it's gonna be back-to-back -back Ugins here. Presumably. But I can take out the opponent's Ugin. I guess they can still replay the Thieves Guild Enforcer. So we'll see. Take my draw step. So, if I tank both at Ugin, Enforcer probably jumps in front of Serpent. Yeah, let's send both at Ugin and see what happens.
Suppose I could have also activated the Crawling Barons to send a third creature at Ugin. Does jump in front of Stone Coil. Your fate is sealed. And then we'll just play Ugin. Can maybe draw with Tome first. And then minus five. And we still get to draw with the other tome here. And then it shouldn't be too difficult to take out Ugin. Twenty cars remain. Ugin takes out Ugin. Bowen's got two cards left in hand. And cling to dust exiles the other Ugin. That's fine. Another monument, not super useful. Enclave, on the other hand, is. So let me draw here. Simulacrum. So. Can activate Crawling Barons. Send both at Ugin. Brazen Borrower can block, so hopefully Ugin goes down. I no longer wish to stay. All right, and then. 16 cards remaining, just have to be a bit careful that we don't get decked here. But we've got a decent amount of pressure now. Forsaken Monument is keeping us alive. We've got more life gain coming up with uh, Tomes as well. Cling to Dust Ugin again. They're just making their own Zareth sound worse. Because I don't really have any way to replay Ugin out of the graveyard. Maybe if we had Midnight Clock instead of Relic, I could recycle it eventually. Yeah, I guess I can afford to scry instead of drawing here. I've got plenty of card draw between Tome and Enclave. Construct's fine, just another threat. So we'll animate Crawling Barons. Attack. Opponent takes it. Could have still used the Barons again to pump it, but they could have been sandbagging a removal spell. And then can play Construct, could also kick it. Sure. And gets drowned. And do I draw main phase? Nah, I'm fine. I'll just pass. Don't think I'll need to draw more cards to win this game. Agadim's Awakening, okay. For X equals 2, returning Thief and Enforcer. 
So that's gonna mill us for quite a bit here. So I'm glad I stopped drawing when I did. Mills us for two more. So we're down to nine cards. Definitely don't want another monument. Bottom Islands. Base camp, not an exciting draw. So I have eight cards remaining. Uh, opponent probably has to... Let's see, Enforcer goes on Barons. And yeah, they have to chump. They can't flash this back. So I think I'm fine just uh, attacking here and then forcing the issue. Alright, it's double chump. That's fine. Opponent falls to two. And more importantly, we get rid of all the mill creatures. So unless they have another Agadim's Awakening in hand, we should be okay. Um, so the question is, do I draw with Enclave here? Don't think I'm supposed to. But I'll maybe do it end of turn. Now they can gain a bit more life with the Cling to Dust, potentially. They have six cards in graveyards, so they can cast it once more. So if they have a blocker, they can maybe stay alive for an extra turn. Are but now we don't have to fear Angadim's Awakening as much. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so very close grindy game here against a blue-black rogues deck. So yeah, once again, another matchup where I wouldn't mind having access to Midnight Clock. So I didn't put it in the deck for today's video just because I wanted to maximize the colorless sources. But I think that's an easy swap you can make and probably advisable with the current metagame. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.